No craft world army is complete without the graceful wave sword. And in this video, we will show how to build it the very best way. This guide will focus on specific issues with assembling this kit. It will not be a general guide to the basics of model kit assembly. Please look elsewhere if you are in need of that information. We need to make some build decisions before starting. There are some different ways to build and paint the wave serpent and that will impact the order of the build, how much painting is needed and the weapon options we will be able to use. Later we will also look at the magnetizing options. The first thing I'm going to think about is the canopy. Like most Eldar vehicles this kit is supplied with a clear canopy which can be assembled so that it will open. In addition there is a little man sitting in the cockpit which can be glued in behind the canopy. Many hobbyists will save themselves a little time by simply gluing in the canopy and painting over it, leaving out the pilot. With a little extra effort though the pilot can be painted and inserted with the canopy either glued shut or able to open. This is what I shall be doing today. The next thing to think about is the back door. The back door can be assembled so that the door can be opened, revealing a little of the interior. If it is built to allow the door to open, then we shall have to paint the inside of the door and some of the interior as well. Alternatively, it can be glued shut to reduce the amount of painting to do. Another thing to consider is if and what to magnetize. What I have discovered while building this kit is that one can have all of the weapon options and a rotating turret without using magnets at all. All the weapons are designed to friction fit, allowing different options to be swapped out without using magnets. The only issue with friction fitting the weapon options is that the little shroud pieces on the turret do not friction fit very well. They will just fall off. In the end, I did magnetize the weapons for the turret while leaving the underslung weapons unmagnetized for friction fitting. This is because I did want the shroud covers to stay on and to have all the weapon options available. I will talk more about the magnetizing options in more detail later. The last sort of thing we want to figure out before starting is the turret articulation. The top turret has two points that can be articulated. The bottom part of the turret has a pin that can be glued to it from the underside of the top hull. This will hold the bottom part of the turret to the hull while still being able to rotate. A little tooth on this part of the turret fits into notches into the top hull, holding it in place. To move this piece around, you can lift it up so that the tooth comes out of the notch and then rotate it around to a new position. The top part of the turret sits on a peg on the top of the bottom part of the turret. This too can freely rotate if you do not glue it. If you do not care about articulation, you could just glue all these parts in a fixed position. I have chosen to allow maximum articulation in my turret, so I will glue the bottom part of the turret only to the underside pin and leave the top turret unglued from the bottom part of the turret. By doing it this way, I will need to put some more paint down under the bottom part of the turret before gluing it to its pin. Which brings me to the next decision. Sub assemblies. Many will tend to fully assemble their models and then paint them. This approach is not very good for the wave serpent however. For best results we will need to combine painting with assembly in a number of thoughtfully ordered stages depending on the options previously decided upon. For one example, if you decide to have a clear canopy, you will need to paint the pilot before you glue the top hull to the bottom hull. For another example, if you are using an airbrush to paint the top hull, it will make sense to do that step before inserting the canopy and pilot to save from masking them. Once we have decided on all these options, we can begin assembly. 
the first step with any multi-part plastic kit is to snip all the bits from the sprue and clean off any flash and mold lines. This is my first attempt at building the wave serpent. So the next step is to dry fit all of the bits to see how it all goes together. This step is also important for working out the right order in which to assemble the bits and determine at which stages in the assembly process we need to do some painting. The next time I build a wave serpent I will be able to skip this dry fitting step as I will already know what to do. As a plastic kit all the pieces will be cemented together using a plastic cement. Later I will often say gluing one piece to another but if it is a plastic to plastic join I will be using plastic cement rather than glue as such. I rather like this Tamiya plastic cement at the moment because of the little brush applicator built into the lid. There will be links in the description of this video where you can source this glue or plastic cement as well as other things used in this video for a nice discount. Check that out to help support this channel. When it comes to fixing the magnets I will be using a super glue of course as plastic cement will not work on anything except plastic. I have decided to fit the door so that it can open. Consequently, I will need to paint the interior of the wave serpent that will be visible when the door is open. This really needs to be done before gluing the top hole to the bottom. I am just painting the interior with black primer using a brush. This will hide the grey plastic but not require too much time and fuss. The end result will be something like this. Black is the colour that absorbs the most light so it is best for creating the look of a dark interior with the least effort. I don't feel like spending much effort painting the interior given it will be rarely seen. Later I will also give the underside of the hull a simple uniform black coat of primer for the same reason. This part of the model will rarely be seen and would be fully shaded anyway. To allow the door to open we simply glue the door frame to the rear lower hull with the door hinges sandwiched in between being sure no glue is on the hinges or the voids where they fit. Another bit of priming to do early is the insides of the engines and the gap between the engines and the sides of the hull. Once that is painted then we can glue all of the hull pieces together except for the top hull where the turret and canopy fit. It is not a bad idea to also paint the engine intakes now too. One could glue the lower piece of the turret to the top hull in whichever position one liked. However, I want to use the pin provided to allow this piece to be rotated around. Before fitting that pin, however, it is a good idea to paint some black primer around the hollow where it fits, as once fitted it will be hard to reach with the brush. You can save yourself a bit of time by ignoring the cockpit and pilot part of the model and just gluing the canopy to the top hole and then painting over it all. However, for the best effect, we can leave the canopy clear and paint the pilot so that he can be seen behind it. The cockpit fits to the underside of the top hull. There is also a little piece that glues to the pilot's headrest that can hold the hinge of the canopy allowing it to open. All of this wants to be painted before fitting to the top hull. I paint the pilot's legs black before fitting the arms. They will not really be visible with the arms fitted so there is no need for a fancy paint job. Once that is done we can fit the arms. With all the pilot put together in his cockpit we can finish him by dry brushing white over his black primer and then painting translucent inks over that for a very quick but effective paint job. People are calling this slap job these days. Whatever you call it, it takes only minutes to do. Before fitting the pilot, we will also want to put some paint down on the little device that is part of the top hole, but will sit inside the canopy in front of the pilot's head. I suggest also painting those parts of the canopy that represent the frames of the canopy. I would not fit the pilot and canopy to the hull just yet though. If you want to paint the top hull using an airbrush then it will be best to do all that before fitting the canopy to save the need to fiddle about with masking that area off. I will be painting the top hull to look like a star field with nebulas. I will detail more about how I did that in another video so subscribe if you would like to see that. Once that is done we can finally fit the top hull to the rest of the hull. The last part to assemble now is the top turret and the underslung weapons. This is where we will look at magnetizing. As I mentioned before, all of the weapons will fit well just by friction. Only the shrouds for the turret 
weapons are loose. So I think there is nothing to be gained from magnetizing the underslung weapons. Even their mounting point to the hull can be friction fitted to the hull. This allows the underslung weapons to swing from side to side for maximum pew pew value. We can also get away without magnetizing the weapons for the top turret. But then the shrouds will be falling off all the time. You can just leave them off of course. They're only cosmetic. But I decided to magnetize them. My first thought was to put a magnet into the shroud and glue another magnet to the end of the axle on the turret. That way I would not need to magnetize the weapons themselves as they would fit in between. Unfortunately this did not work out. I did have two millimeter diameter magnets which are the exact same width as the spindle but there was too little surface area between the magnet and the end of the spindle to get a secure bond. So what I did was chop the spindle down to the wider point and then drill a 2mm hole into the end deep enough to fit a magnet. Then I glued a magnet into the fitting place of the shroud and into each weapon. The 2mm magnets could easily be fitted into the weapons where the spindle would have gone. Of course I made sure that the polarities of all the magnets lined up so that any weapon could go on any mount. This works well enough but it does take a lot of magnets to do it this way because each weapon must have one of its own two. In total it took 14 magnets, two for the shrouds, two for the mounts and ten for all the weapons. Many of the weapons are quite long and will tend to droop under their weight a bit too. When I build my next wave serpent I believe I will not bother with magnetization at all even on this top turret. The weapons stay on fine just from friction fitting. I believe a little blob of blue tack or poster putty inserted into the shrouds well will be enough to keep them attached. Your mileage may vary but I feel that this is one kit that really has no need for the fuss and bother of magnetizing even if you want to keep all of your weapon options available for tabletop play there we go my first wave serpent fully assembled and almost fully painted in the next video of my elder project i will show you how i did this starfield painting scheme subscribe for that if you like uh, like share and all that gubbins bye for now